I am so glad that you are here joining us for this build series because this car has been 20 years in the making. And some cars are just absolute classics, absolute bangers, absolute best of all time of their specific era in space and time on the continuum. I would agree with all of that. I used to have one of these cars 20 years ago. I didn't. I wanted to modify it. I, I wanted to make it mad. I neither had the friends, skills or money to do it. At that stage, you'd get all the information off the internet. Everybody that was on the forums for these cars, they're always stoned. They didn't even go on car cruises. They just smoke a bong and float home. But now, all these years later, we're doing it properly as we properly as we can. We are not smoking bongs because we don't do that and we're not floating home just yet. We're skidding home we're on gonna the track float home on a cloud of joy once this build's finished, but it's not finished, it's just kicking off. And to kick off and to celebrate the kicking off of one of my favourite cars of all time. Because this episode is brought to you by none other than Mighty Car Mods. We are very excited to reveal the next yes. of the Mighty Car Mods Mad uh, Manga Style posters. It is a series. Uh, either add it to your series or begin your collection. Occasionally we do these, it's a very, very special thing. You can order yours. We will individually sign it and then send it to you at your house anywhere in the world. We're really, really proud of these. And once they're gone, people, they are gone. And you may have noticed if you've been following with some of these series, which do come out every now and then, if they're cars that are particularly special close to us or have been an absolute massive project that we want to celebrate, they end up here. And so we commissioned the artist Jess Army to do this. He's done an awesome job. They are going to be available for a limited time only. Once they are gone, they are gone. I did see some on eBay. They sell for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars Get or like a thousand dollars. It's huge. From us. Grab we'll yours now you. from us directly. And now we really hope you enjoy this build series because we are it's we big. are so excited. It's We're so big. excited. So thanks for joining us and enjoy the build of the 180SX. If somebody asked you what is the best car in the world, you would probably say Two -door STI. a Volkswagen up. Daihatsu Shirai. And you might be right. K truck. Except you're wrong. It's actually an SR20 powered 180SX. This, is cool. this here is going to be the dream build of creating the ultimate 180SX. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Now before we kick off people, I just want to have a quick chat about some facts and figures and the madness that has been going on in the used car scene. Now I bought this car in 2019 and I actually think I paid way too much for it. I've got the receipt here. I bought this car for $9,300, which is about 1,000 American dollars. Now, even nearly 20 years ago, my mates were buying these for $9,000, $8,000, $10,000, kind of the same. So pretty much for the last 20 years, the price of these has kind of just kind of been going like this. And then in the last two years, something happened. Something crazy happened, people, that I'm calling Cargate. Is that like an Evo leaving a meat? It's like a Mustang leaving a meat. <laughs> Cargate is the madness that happened with used car prices. Now, there are two 180SXs for sale right now in Australia. One of them is a completely munted non-turbo that's had a different engine put in it. It's $35,000. And then there's another one that's like that that does have an SR20. It is turbo and five speed, um, and it's like five hundred thousand dollars. So, what is going on? I don't know, but it would look like this car, which is basically stock and super clean. Yep. Well, um, well, yes. It's filthy, <laughs> but it's super stock. It's clean and from filthy. a distance. Don't look too closely. We'll 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 fill you in. Good from afar, but far from good. Um, but. Now, because I actually have a history with these cars, with S13s, non-turbo, 180s, GTIRs, S15s, it's now time to actually make the ultimate 180SX, the car that I always wanted but couldn't do, and now I'm gonna do. And you know what? It's actually not gonna be that crazy. This is my plan. A nice, clean, streetable 180SX with 180 kilowatts bah, wrong. at the wheels. Bah, wrong. What? You, you, if you don't make a thousand horsepower, you're not really a pro. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not making a thousand horsepower. Now, how much would this make right now? It hasn't been dynoed. I don't need to dyno. I can tell you it's going to make 110 kilowatts, maybe 100. So I'm pretty much going to double that. With an exhaust that makes 128, and then with a boost control that makes 135, and then yeah. it goes bang. So you look, put 91 on I'm aiming for 180, but maybe I'll have a little flicky flick switch there that takes it up to 220, which is kind of what makes it awesome. But the goal is 180SX, 180 kilowatt. We're going 90s style, people. Yeah. 90s style. So 
before we jump in, let's just show you what we're working with today. And then there is a boot full of spare parts. And then there is stuff that has been ordered all over the world that is incoming for this car. I'm very, very excited. This is what this is what I'm all about, people. I mean, and I'm and Volkswagens no, and and this and this and yeah, and falafel is good. Anyway, let's have a quick look around the car and then let's dive into the build. Welcome. It's going to be a magical journey. It's going to be great. Come with us. It's going to be awesome. Magic. The mighty Nissan 180SX is probably my favourite car out of Japan. Before prices went crazy, these were an affordable way to get into modifying cars, track days and drifting with a 2.0-litre turbocharged rear-wheel drive manual package with a design that has actually stood the test of time. This one is quite simply the best condition 180SX I have ever seen and I am going to honour that while also making it my own and building the car that I always wanted as a kid but never did. There are a few areas that need some attention, most notably under the bonnet, where it looks like we've got a blown turbo. So people, 180SX, you've got a bit of info about it. There were about 300,000 at least JDM ones built, possibly more, I don't actually know Most the of them have stats. gone up in bong smoke now. They are literally, they're either up in bong smoke or around a pole. Or around a pole. Like they don't exist anymore. Or running in a wrecking yard. Or some people are actually holding on to them as collectibles because as years pass and laws change in different countries, looking at you America, um, it's then legal to have them. These did go to America in this stage and also these things were built for an, a whole 10 years, even when the next model came out, which says a bit about the popularity. This is technically a hatchback. Um, but I just want to take you back a bit because I've spent a bit of time in some 180s, stock ones, modified ones over the years and also back when they weren't cool. I mean, they were cool because it was a JDM car, but they weren't like, you know, $40,000 plus. They were just nuggets that you picked up if you'd upgraded from a Corolla or a Pulsar. Um, so firstly, stock, not that fast. Yes, they make turbo noises. Yes, it's got an SR20 in it, but they weren't that fast. You weren't really going to beat, you know, a Skyline or a modified thing. Rexies would give them a run for their money on the launch back in the day. Um, so really, it wasn't this fantastical, magical driving experience. Um, can you drift a stock one? Yeah, particularly if you've got one with an LSD in it. Um, they, they go sideways well, which is kind of partly what made them so popular. But everyone, everyone modified them. Now, why did they modify them? Because of the reasons I just said. They were kind of a little bit slow. They were kind of, yeah, okay, at drifting. But you could modify them for cheap and get a huge, huge result. These days, maybe that's not as possible. If you go and buy a brand new, you know, Golf R, you've got to spend big money and, you know, it's a big thing to go and go a bit faster. With these, it wasn't difficult. Exhaust boost controller, and away you go. So that's pretty much what everyone did. Any 180 that you saw had wheels, coilovers, suspension, springs, boost controller, front mount, that's kind of what it had. And then the crazy ones, people would put Skyline engines in them or they would you know, build the engines and go stupid with boost, but we didn't have the fuel back in the day to make a thousand horsepower like you can today, which is why you see cars doing it. Martin, you are strumming my skin. They were modified, weren't they? No, because that's exactly what I had my 180. Yep. I, it's, it's kind of like, you got a Vertex style kit, I say Vertex style because most people, it's like, I've got a Vertex kit that they got off Nissan Sylvia. No, it wasn't. It was a Vertex style kit. You do a front mount, you do an exhaust, you do an intake, you do some coilovers and off you go. I cannot even believe that I'm saying this. We are actually cracking out. Oh, we're going to have a purity I box. I can't even believe it. Like I can't, if you told me 10, 15 years ago that you would need a purity box for a 180SX, I would have laughed at you. Oh. But I know there's some people out there saying, Stock, they should just be stock. The purity, they should never change, we never mess with them. It's beautiful. This is a pretty nice one. Anyway, so yeah, it's pretty clean, but we are going to purity box it. Replaced. Yes, we're not going to throw the stuff in the bin. We are going to throw anything we pull off and put in the purity box. We're not pulling that much stuff off, but we are going to do some tasteful, nice modifications, just like every 180SX in the world has ever had before. Yes, it's going to be good. Now, it's also probably worth saying this car is currently unregistered. Um, my, where did my paperwork go? You kicked it. Do you know where I kicked you it? You stomped on it. 186 purity box. There we go. There it is, people. Back to standard. If it ever, what well, I don't know why you would, but hey, it's there. At the authorized inspection station, 180SX. Oh, fail. Fail. So it failed, and then, but when you go down to the notes and you go reason for the fail, probably not surprising, and the best possible result there could be, is um, the tires were bald on the back. And that was probably because this person did a lot of very sensible runs to the shopping centre oh, totally. That's all to you see buy for, right? their dog food. So, um, there is a whole bunch of stuff in the boot that came with the car. We're going to pull it out, we're going to see what we've got. Like I said, we've got lots of stuff coming. I think we just need to start just exploding it, yep. getting everything done. Now, 
We also drove this car, we took it around the track and it was just blowing more blue smoke than its previous owners. Yeah. So um, we need to compression test it. And then the big exciting thing that's happening is the turbo there is going in the bin. In the purity box. Oh, sorry. In the purity box. It's not going... In the bin. It's going in... Purity box. So one of the best things about buying a used car like this that is actually something that's quite niche is it actually came with a couple of boxes of spare parts. So we're just going to have a look through and see what we've got. Uh, what it is that we need to keep and what can go in the bin. I mean the purity box, so I'm going to put that one there, get the purity box over here, and let's just start seeing what we've got. So, we also need the bin, Martin. Can we please put some of this in the bin? Yeah. Oh, yes! In the bin. All right. So, for example, we probably can't put a flare in the bin, can we? Probably that. dispose that's of that. You can dispose of that, that at, a boat, there. at a boat shop. Let's see what's going on over here. All right, so are they coils? These are these are like the special. Yes. Are they actually R8 coils? I think they are. Um, well, yeah, they're they're basically what you find on Volkswagens, but they're good upgrades for SRs. Awesome. That's on the GTIR as well. Great. So yeah, NGK coils, and we have there is four of them, Fantastic. which is how many we need. So that is good. Martin, it's come with one of these. What is a 180SX without one of those hanging off the back? Even though no one could have actually travelled Japan for years and seen one or used one. Uh, we've also got some uh, stock hoses, which is pretty cool. So brand new, genuine Nissan hoses, which is cool. Uh, I believe that's a battery tray, which is cool. Oh, a battery support. Awesome. There's that. It goes over the top of More there. hoses. We what have else? another one of these. What is that for? I don't and know, but they're little, there's four nuts for something. Um, pit work as well. I feel like pit work is JDM. Well, yeah, that it is, isn't oil it? Oil filters. Yeah, you yep. do see them, and there's lots of them. So either they're planning on lots of oil changes, or you've got basically like two years of ownership right there for your SR. Lots we of also hoses, have a um, hose Bam Bam box. We've done a whole episode on how to install one of those pieces of shit. Yeah. Ah. And yeah, more battery tray stuff. I don't actually know what that's for. Some 180 oh, yes. will tell us. Look at this one. Little... Oh, a new shift boot. It legit needs one of those. These, that's unreal. These are good mods. I believe that's sump plug. Pretty Got sure. Yeah. Stern sump plug. I don't know what they are. Oh, sump plug washers. Mm. Yes. Someone cares about this car, man. What's that? Oh, that's for a... What's he? What's I do not know why the car came with this. What man. is it? <laughs> no, stay still. Uh, it's don't look me. yet. No, it no, won't hurt you much. I don't like it. There what you go. It? What is it? It's a bow tie, it's a man. bow tie. There you go. Okay, fantastic. Um, and little green things, I guess they go somewhere. And a pit work belt. Oh, that's actually good, man. That's like a full major service right there. That's awesome. I believe Mom. these things are timing chains, so we need to do a timing belt. Over here is a bit more kind of random stuff. Uh, you've got your bow tie and your tissues. There you go. Um, well, you there's a, a bunch of mounts here. Uh, that's for adjusting coilovers that can probably go I think in the bin. Um, battery in. terminals, NGK spark plugs. Just kind of random, random things, but things that are handy to have. All right, let's compression test it. Then let's just pull it apart sure. and throw all the old stuff in the bin. Done. To the person in the YouTube comments that was upset that I got rid of my rubber floor mats from my Volkswagen up, this is for you. And you can get... I, I was going to use that one and I was going to use that... Dude! No. No, look. What? Look. What is it? Nissan Motorco March. That's not 180 mats. Whoa. You chucked my that floor is, mats in. That is legit worth a lot of money. You chucked my floor mats in there. They came with this car. That is not yours, but you can have it. That is legit worth money. Mine. What else is in here? That's March as well. We got March floor mats with the 180SX. That Super is insane. Mats. Thank you. That is insane. I am the comment section now Wait taking on. my mats back. Is it possible these here are for the back of the march? Uh, yeah, but look, they're pretty. Like someone's. Oh, it says march. It says march. It That's says worth march. money. Did you chop these in half? Oh, wait on. That says march. Dude, there's a rear one. What are the chances? There you go. Thanks, Legit. Ben. Take those. I could have used them in my build. Um, and now I'll What's put that one? these ones in the bin. There are they right. legit? That says this and march! No! That says this and March! That's my Nissan March too! Dude, the whole boot of floor mats is Nissan March stuff. What does that say? That says Nissan March. Thank Dude, you. Dude, legit, that is worth money. You I'm not even joking. Yeah, it's worth money. Sick. What is this? That was in know. the boot. I don't know, open it. Can you open it? Oh, do you know what I think that is? What is it? I think that is the, um, that's the sunroof 
Oh, Some really piece picked of up. the. Oh, dude, you do not. You don't. Come on, man. That never. Just delete it. Edit that bit. Now that we've seen what kind of extra loot we got in the boot when we bought it, the first step is to jack up the car and investigate what's going on under the bonnet. The bonnet is what we call the hood in Australia and we call the trunk the boot. And gas, we call that petrol, cause it's not a gas. Powers in kilowatts, measurements in centimetres and shrimps are called prawns, damn it. And people over revving their Hondas through fart can exhausts, we call them dickheads. We're removing the spark plug so we can see what kind of condition they're in and then we're gonna set up for a compression test. So because the car's been sitting, the battery's a bit tired, we are gonna put it on charge. It's still in good enough condition to keep, uh, but I do have a jumper pack on it just because we're gonna be cranking. We've got our compression tester on cylinder one. We're looking for 150, 160, but most importantly is consistency along the whole lot. So throttle open, fuel pump off, um, all the spark plugs out and give it a crank please, sir. Here we go. Yep. 160. 160? Perfect. Yep, so cylinder awesome. one's 160. And smell old fuel. We go ahead and test all four cylinders and they're looking healthy at 160 PSI. I just want to highlight how good the interior is of this 180SX. A lot of the time when you get these cars, there's kind of holes in the dash from where people in Japan have put gauges and all sorts of random accessories and stuff. This is so clean, it is, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. The doors, the carpets, the handles, there's no cracking on it, there's no stains or marks on it, it's just, it's amazing. I'm so pumped. So as part of our mild modifications, we are going to do a coil upgrade. We're doing that because we are also going to go to an aftermarket ECU to give us a bit more control and also give us the ability to do that. Now, these factory coils are known for cracking and sure enough, even that first one has a giant crack the whole way down here. And it just, it just makes them misbehave. It's sort of a common fix. So back in the day, you could just put replacement coils um, as aftermarket options as well. We're going to go for an even more modern coil that does require an aftermarket ECU to run it. So all this is going to get disconnected and pulled off. And we just make a new little sub loom that goes from here into the new coils. Three out of four. <laughs> yeah. That one, cylinder four, straight down there. Yeah. Cylinder three, two survived somehow. Probably because it got replaced. Probably because that one got replaced. Yeah, back when I had my 180 when I was young, um, every few months or something, it felt like you had to change these because I could never afford to change all four of them at once. So your car would start running terribly, you replace one of them, uh, basically, you know, unplugging them, plugging them in again to try and work out which one it was, and then you replace that one, and then a few months later you're yeah. doing another one. And, and it's, yeah. just, it's just heat and age. These are like right down in the top of the rocker cover, and they get hot, and they get old and brittle. Um, technology has advanced though, so the new ones that are in there should last forever. Do you know where these ones can go, Martin? Absolutely, they can. So I'm moving the intercooler piping so we can access the turbo. I'm going to remove that because that one there is going in the bin. And, purity uh, box. What? In the purity box. Sorry, it's going into the purity box. Uh, and we have got a JDM S15 T28 brand new uh, on its way, which hopefully will be here soon. So nothing too unexpected under here. It does have aircon, but there's no belt on it and there's a lot of grease and crud on the wheel, which makes me think it hasn't been on there for a while. Um, a lot of oil on the sump, but generally that's coming from somewhere else. Some people look at the sump and go, oh, I've got an oil leak down low. Usually it's up top and it's running down to the sump and just covering everything. Um, got a rear main seal leak as well. That can end up with a slipping clutch. So I think we will replace a clutch in this. Did you um, say there's some leaks sense. under this 180SX, Martin? <laughs> um, and the other thing that's good to replace as well, if, if you don't know how long it's been done, is rocker cover, because a lot of the time just the smallest rocker cover leak can drip down and just cause an absolute mess. So I don't know where else Sylvia's leaked from, but rear main, certainly, and rocker cover, certainly, and there's quite a few over on the, this side where the alternator is, so we're gonna fix all that, because we should, because it's a mad car, it needs to be fixed. Next up, I'm going to spray all the old uh, nuts and bolts with some WD-40 Specialist Penetrant. Um, it's a good idea to do this first, uh, get under here, spray it all, do other stuff, do what you gotta do, give it time to get in there, and then you can release it. Um, the dump pipe bolts and the ones on the back of the turbo and the exhaust are notorious for being rusty and gross on pretty much all cars. So I'm gonna just spray every bolt in that whole setup and then come back later with some long spanners and attempt to crack them without breaking stuff. We need to access the turbo, so the next thing to come off the car is the exhaust. This is made easier by spraying some of the rubber exhaust hangers with WD-40 silicon spray and then removing each section. While this car may still have decent levels of purity, it doesn't mean it's all in good condition. So you can see also from up here that some of these hoses are starting to crack as well. So we're obviously gonna be replacing all of this with a new piping kit, but these are kind of some of the things that you wouldn't normally see, particularly a crack like this, which is gonna be hidden underneath these hose clamps. So all of that stuff is going in the purity bin box. 
The next thing to come off is the front bar so we've got better access and so we can remove the factory side mounted intercooler. We are keeping these SSR wheels for now so that it's easy to move the car around, but eventually we will replace them with something else. So we took our spark plugs out to do our comp test. We are going to throw a new set of NGK BKR 6E plugs in. That is the one that is uh, usually recommended on the factory listing for an SR20. A lot of people go to 7s if you're chasing a lot more power. We're not chasing a lot more power. Uh, these will be totally fine for our purpose. So we're going to put them in just so nothing falls in there. Um, we are probably going to do redo rocker cover gasket, but that doesn't affect the spark plugs. So we're just going to wind them straight back in. Standard spark plugs like these ones have a useful service life of somewhere between 20 and 40,000 Ks. That's going to be less in an engine that's tuned for more power or being tracked and thrashed. More modern cars often use iridium or platinum tips in the center and ground electrode, which can go upwards of 100,000 Ks before needing replacement. The front bar is ready to come off and go straight into the bin, except it doesn't fit. I've got another front bar to go on, which is an upgrade that I'll be showing you as the build progresses. But for now, we've finally got access to the turbo, so it's time to get it gone. All right, this has been released from its prison. Oh, there it is. Please take it, mate. It's all yours. It should be disconnected, hopefully. Still something down there. The trick is to take the manifold off with all the lines still attached. All right. And there you go. Let's have a look at what we got here, Martin. So this here is the factory turbo off the 180SX, uh, which is around 30 years old. Yeah, the 90s was that long ago. The car's also done around 110,000 Ks according to the dash, but it is an import and it's possible that there was some sneaky shaminging going on somewhere. So maybe it's done 150, 160, 180,000 Ks. So that there is gonna be replaced with a new turbo that is gonna be due here soon, which I'm going to go through with you, which is very, very exciting. But for now, this one here, which we intuitively think there's something wrong with because it was blowing a lot of smoke uh, this one here can just go in the bin so the factory turbo is now gone uh, the front bar is off which is going to give us access to the side mount intercooler which is literally about this big now i know there are going to be some purity police out there but we are increasing the boost and i want to put a front mount on there and i've already bought it and already paid for it plus so they look mad they do they do look good so that is coming so i'll get rid of the piping and the actual core of that uh, what about you, Martin? So we also noticed when we drove it at the track that the suspension was a bit sort of clunky and thrashed. Um, it does have aftermarket coilovers in it, uh, but these are meant to be rebuilt um, occasionally when they yep. wear them out, if, especially if you're giving them a hard time doing skids. Uh, so we think these are a bit wear out, but we've actually got some others that we want to put in that should make the ride bellissimo. Yep. Um, so we're probably going to swap them out. These and ones are going in the bin. The other thing as well is this uh, has the S13 turbo brakes, which as I understand it are single pot calipers. Um, very typical of what you'd see on a base model Subaru Impreza or a Pulsar. Like they're just a bit bigger, but there's nothing particularly flash about them. Um, so there are a number of brake upgrades you can do on these, including 300ZX calipers and um, calipers from other Nissan's GTR brakes, GTST yep. brakes, stuff like that. You have to dial it in with how many studs you got and we're staying four stud. Yep. So uh, we're gonna try and find ourselves a little brake, nice factory suite upgrade. It was a very common thing to do back in the day to do a five stud conversion because then you got way more options for wheels and things like that. But I'm, I'm straddling the purity fence. It's like part of me wants to make the car way better, which we're going to do. The other part of me wants to kind of relive my youth of having a 180. So there's certain things that I want to do that may not make sense to everyone, but they make sense to me. If we don't but, have um, to, you know what I mean? I just want to keep it four stud until I realize there aren't enough wheels available. <laughs> and then I'll be back here telling you why it's a really got a good idea to change the five oh, studs. Look, if you can find wheels. four stud wheels and you can fit your brakes, you don't, there's no other huge benefit yeah. for something making 200 kilowatts anyway. Um, yeah, anyway, so look, this suspension's coming out, which is easy on this car. Yep. Uh, we'll take the brakes off, and then I'm going to start dismantling the rear of the car because we got some changes happening back there as well. I'm refreshing my memory of pulling apart the rear of a 180SX by watching a video of me pulling apart the rear of a 180SX on YouTube that we made many years ago. All of this stuff is going in the bin. I mean, the purity box, and we're gonna be upgrading the back with a Type-X kooky rear conversion. All the factory boost control is coming out, along with the aftermarket boost control system, which is in there. Um, so we're just gonna replace it with a new Mac valve. You can recycle that kind of stuff, but it's often a good idea for the money just to play it safe with one that you know works. So that's gonna come out. We might reuse that mounting system. We'll uh, get some new hoses on there as well and throw this all in the purity box. Martin, these are also going in the bin. What are they? The lights. The purity box. 
I mean, yeah, they're is going a, in the purity is that box. A, is that a khaki rear end and one's a kooky, one's a bookie and a schmooky? Isn't that what you call it? Oh, I can't remember, man. All those words make me feel a bit weird. People call them. I've got a schmooky kook MR2. Do you? Yeah. Good for you, man. All right. In the bin. Stop, this don't is, put it no, in the bin, dude. It's, it's, a khaki, the bin. it's a khaki lot. No, it's not. It's like we're doing a kooky conversion. It's a <laughs> thing. Martin, Sorry, you can't even say I that. I didn't mean. I you can't mean, even say that. No, it's. We a, had to cover you with a goat. A cr what is it? A don't talk. It's a khaki. Martin, it's, don't talk. You're wasting don't put the them internet. In the bin. I'm not putting them in the you bin. You are. Just, put, it, put them in the purity box. I'm not. That's what I'm storing them in there until. You can have a pure, shitty looking 180 using those lights. I'm just storing them in there until the bin gets taken. Just put him there. Don't Why are you so upset Don't upset about the it? internet. Just be cool. I'm just storing it's him in there. It's your car, so you should do what the internet says. Next up, it's time to remove the coilovers, which should be a simple and quick process. But due to one of these bolts being completely thrashed, it's taking way longer and is way smokier than it should be. That's not going again. Next up, I can remove the tiny factory side mount intercooler. Here's where we're at. Front bar. In the bin. Intercooler. Bin. Intercooler piping. In the bin. Turbocharger. Bin. Exhaust. In the bin. Wheels and tires. Bin. Brakes. In the bin. Suspension. Bin. Rear lights. In the bin. Center garnish. Bin. Oh, make it stop. Did I forget anything, Martin? Oh, I don't know, but by bin we mean purity box. We don't actually mean the bin for most of the items that he just rattled off. No, um, purity box. You know what I love about this? Things like the power steering and the belts and all the other stuff that are really boring to fix and modify, they all work really well and everything's really clean. We slap some injectors in this, we slap an ECU in this, we slap an exhaust and a mad turbo on it. Yeah. And we're good, man. It's going to be great. It's going to be excellent. Now, we did just have an exciting delivery. There are lots of deliveries coming, but today's one was particularly exciting because it is... I love boxes that um, size. And your turbocharger. So we were going to get into that today, but we've run out of time. So that one's not going in the bin. Um, we will get to that next time. So I'm just going to give this a little tidy up uh, and then we'll be ready. Uh, next time will be turbo front mount. I mean, next time is yep. going to be the main course. Yep, absolutely. And I'm going to spend some time on the phone trying to get OEM parts out of Nissan. Yeah, nice. Wish me luck. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, we have had some boxes starting to arrive because, you know, we've ordered lots and lots of different things for this car. Some boxes have started to arrive, but there was a really big order that I did that I, I expect to be probably up to 10 boxes of stuff and two boxes have arrived. So this is just, this is the environment that we're working but in at the moment. But before we go on, stuff. we just want to uh, get a, a quick word to the sponsor of this episode, which is Mighty Car Mods. Um, yes, it is, Martin. We, uh, we have some merchandise that you might like. You can click a thing, you can get that shirt, this shirt, you can get some fender covers, which are pretty awesome. Have we got fender covers? Right there. Oh, Martin. I know, I forgot. Don't I literally even. looked at it then. Don't even. I've just, I've finished all the dirty fender. Oh, God. So Can good. you please put one on that yeah, side? Yeah, I know, I need to. Okay, but I should probably wipe off the dirty mark I left on that side from not out. using my fender covers. All right. Yeah, man, look at and that. And the other thing that That's would awesome. be most excellent for you to be using in your home garage or DIY space is the Mighty Car Mods earmuffs, which I have lost. Didn't you Because just use we them? are very, very professional, and I can tell you right now that our earmuffs are most excellent. 
and I've just found them Maybe just over there. Maybe you put them in the, in the bin. Uh, they're definitely not <laughs> in the bin. Um, these are our Mighty Car Mods earmuffs. They meet the safety standards of the standards of the standardization of your safety standard. So thanks for watching, and in case you can't tell, um, this is so fun. We're excited. Love ripping this stuff apart. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so, so good. And I'm saying that about a dirty old Nissan, and that says all. Yeah, that. it's great. Now, if you want any of those parts for your car, um, start dumpster diving is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, no, we we put them on. We, we'll put them up on on face balls or something. Somewhere. We'll, we'll put them. Yeah, recycle, recycle them back into the world for sure. Yep. All right, thank you very much, everybody. You can support the show, of course, by going to mightycarmods.com. We've got an email list there as well. We do blog posts, lots of really interesting stuff happening all the time. Um, so you can follow us there. There's also some social, 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 social media. Click the bell, follow things um, to follow on the socials. Cool. You'll get some updates. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Bye. See you next time. Bye. I'm so hungry. Starber. I am hungry. I'm having rice. one of these honey macadamias. No, I want rice. Let's get right rice. Right now. I feel like Look rice. at that. Rice Absolutely. Makes me burp. Nom, 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 nom. Remember to grab yourself a 180SX poster available for a limited time only. We'll sign it and ship it to your door anywhere in the world. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. So grab yours now.